Welcome to morning worship at St. Andrew's Salter Lane. As ever, we give thanks to Simon, who has put everything together, to Catherine, who has done the slides, and to all the other people, particularly the choir, who have helped to make our worship this morning. Let us begin our worship as we say, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing from hymns and psalms number 281, Come down, O love divine. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. Your Spirit gives light, but we have preferred darkness. Your Spirit gives wisdom, but we have been foolish. Your Spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive us our sins and enable us by your Spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Pentecost. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit on the disciples with the wind from heaven and with tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel, send us out in the power of the same Spirit to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us sing from hymns and psalms number 283. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Our leader will read to us from the second chapter of the book of Job and then from the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. 
A reading from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 28, and the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Then afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens, and on earth blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. No one is entirely sure how, or when or why for that matter, the festival of Pentecost acquired the name of Whit Sunday in England. Of all the explanations, the one I like the best is that of a 14th century monk who said that it was called Whit Sunday because that was when the Holy Spirit gave some wit to the apostles. In the olden days, of course, when spelling was optional, you could get away with an explanation like that. But it is much more likely that Whit Sunday should be read as White Sunday, and it refers to the white robes worn by the newly baptized. Certainly the eve of Pentecost was for a long time one of the occasions when baptisms commonly took place. It is, after all, an appropriate occasion. The coming of the Spirit is always associated with new beginnings. At the beginning of Jesus' own ministry, at his own baptism indeed, all four Gospels record the descent of the Spirit upon him. It is the Spirit who leads Jesus through the wilderness during the period of the temptations. In the synagogue at Nazareth, Jesus begins his proclamation of God's coming kingdom with the words from the prophecy of Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to announce good news. Something new is happening. The world is changing. Now the world is about to change again. At Easter, Jesus is raised triumphant from the dead, his victory over the power of darkness confirmed. In the Ascension, Jesus is recognized as Lord, not simply as the true King of Israel, but as the true Lord of all the world. 
But what is that supposed to mean in practice? How is this going to be made real? What, above all, is going to happen next? The disciples had been told that their job now would be to proclaim that Jesus is Lord wherever they go and whatever they do. And they have no idea how they could possibly do that. There they are, this small group of men and women waiting. Waiting for they could do nothing else. Waiting to see how the world would be changed. Waiting to see how they would do the impossible. Pentecost is the beginning of how they set about it, for it is the action of God that makes it possible for them to set about it. As the Baptist had said, the coming Messiah will baptize his own with the Holy Spirit and with fire. But the coming of the Holy Spirit is not just the coming of a new power, it is the coming of a new presence, or perhaps better the revealing of a new presence. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God's gift of himself, his promise to strengthen the disciples to do what they are called to do. Peter, who had denied with oaths that he had ever known Jesus, will now be given the courage to proclaim him in the streets. The small group in the upper room are to go out into the world in the power of the Spirit to show what it means to proclaim Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. At the centre of the story of Pentecost, there is this list of names, this list of places. It's always a trial for the person who gets to read the lesson. But I always take the view that they shouldn't worry because nobody else knows how to pronounce them either. But these names cover getting on for half the world that the disciples knew. It is all of the eastern Mediterranean seaboard, and then eastward to the far side of what is now Iran, and perhaps even into Afghanistan. The list goes first east, then north, then south, and finally west to Rome, the centre of the empire. It is a lot of territory. All the places where Jews had gone often had been driven, and from which they have come back to Jerusalem to this festival. But Pentecost was already a festival, the end of the harvest when the grain was gathered in 50 days after Passover. And indeed, the book of Acts is going to contain a lot more names where the apostles will go to spread the word the good news that Jesus is Lord and no one else is. Some of these places we will never hear of again. And indeed, some of the apostles now gathered together we will never hear of again either. Many stories are told about where they went. Some of them, like the tradition that Thomas reached India, may even be true. But for all the group, for all the events that Lutz talked about, how the gospel was spread, there must be many, many more that are known only to those who were there at the time. And known to God, of course, which is the most important thing of all. The kingdom is becoming real in the work of these people, both men and women, both well-known and unknown. They are the bearers of the word, those who are called to be witnesses. And in the coming of the Spirit, the ancient curse of the Tower of Babel is at last undone. The crowd listen, and each of them, all of them, can understand. The Spirit of God brings change, new life and hope, but change is a challenge as well as an opportunity and it is not always welcome. We have known all too much of unwelcome change in the last 15 months. 
Now change comes again with its confusions, its new demands, but also its new hopes. We have spoken a great deal, probably rather too much, of what a new normal will look like. Well, it looks like this. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to apply the lessons of the months of lockdown? Where is this new future that people keep talking about? And how are we going to live it? Pentecost is indeed a good time not only to ask such questions, but to try and live the answers. We cannot make the events of the last year unhappen. We cannot simply forget or ignore the pain, the loneliness, the revealed divisions in our city and country. We cannot simply relax and go on holiday either, nice so that would be. But it's not all effort and challenge. Pentecost is a festival, and the traditional customs of Whitsuntide remembered that. There is a proper time for festival, for celebration, and if the rain ever stops, we may even get a chance to have the party we've all been waiting for. The Spirit of God brings challenge, yes. But the harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, new ways of living. Sometimes people have even mistaken that for intoxication. Amen. Caroline will now lead us in our intercessions. You may wish to light a candle before our intercessions. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. On this Pentecost Sunday, regarded as the birthday of the Church, we pray for the Church throughout the world that we may be filled with joy and boldness to witness to your truth. Strengthen all your bishops, clergy, ministers, preachers and readers in this circuit, diocese and mission partnership, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In your mercy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. We pray especially for the horror being waged by people in Israel, Palestine, Afghanistan, and Myanmar, and by both Covid and a typhoon in India. We pray that as NATO troops leave Afghanistan, there will not be worsening of internal strife and terrorism. We pray for all those sick, injured and dead in these countries, and for the leaders of those and other countries, that they may bring peace, vaccines, oxygen, medicines and shelter. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority and direct this nation and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. In your mercy, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. We bring before you our city, our region, our friends and families. We give thanks for Christian Aid Week for the volunteers who have worked in various ways to raise money and for those who have given generously to support areas in East Africa and Asia where farming has become increasingly difficult as climate change disrupts traditional patterns of weather and agriculture. We pray for our city and this country as we come out of lockdown that people will be able to go back to work, to meet family and friends, to go out to restaurants, museums, concerts and theatres without any increase in infection rates, 
severe illness or deaths. And we pray that vaccines will be shared with poorer nations to reduce the effects of the pandemic worldwide. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another, and love as he loves us. In your mercy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. We bring before you all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially those suffering from long COVID and mental illness as a result of lockdown. We bring before you members of our church and our own families who are ill at this time. Comfort and heal them. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. In your mercy, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ or without faith in Christ, especially civilians and children killed by bombs and missiles. And we pray for those who mourn. We individually name those known to us in a few moments of silence. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St Andrew and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us sum up our prayers together by saying the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us sing together from hymns and psalms number 300, Father of everlasting grace. Oh. 
We raise our songs of triumph higher and praise the inner bolder strain. Out so the firstborn seraphs flight and sing with all our friends in light thy everlasting love to man. The Spirit of Truth leads you into all truth give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the words and the works of God. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.